garage. Well, I'm out here with the Toyota, and I really need some hoses to put this thing back together as far as the intake goes, those little hoses. So I thought I would just spend a few minutes talking about the EGR delete that we're going to be doing, what kind of parts you need to do that, why would you do it, um, where the parts that are there go, and, and what the heck is this whole emissions thing, uh, how's it work. So let's dive into that, and I can give you kind of a brief primer on uh, what it does and what happens if you take it off, and why would you do it, and what parts you need. There's a crap load of parts on the 22RE that are emissions related and it's kind of confusing to figure out which ones do what and what are you going to take off and where we're going to get rid of it. So I thought I'd go over it just so you have a little bit better idea of what parts we're talking about. Over here we're going to talk about this first. This is your air injection here. This tube runs over to here. There's a reed valve. All this stuff is vacuum controlled. No computers. Uh, this comes over and it actually goes over to this box here and that supplies fresh air into your exhaust. If you look right there in that port, here, 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 those four ports, that is for introduction of fresh air into your exhaust. A lot of people think the, these parts are EGR related. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's air injection only, right? It pumps air into the exhaust. Now why would you want that? Well, actually the engineers figured out in the early 70s it was one of the first uh, emission control devices was an air pump. Uh, if you got air into the exhaust it would burn more completely and your exhaust would be cleaner coming out. This is before catalytic converters even came into the market. Now with a catalytic converter it actually helps a lot more because that oxygen hits the catalytic converter, it burns hotter and it cleans it out a lot better. So that's really the purpose of the air injection. Now it doesn't run all the time. It doesn't inject air all the time. That reed valve here basically opens and shuts uh, and especially at idle it's adding a little bit extra oxygen to get that to burn a little bit more cleanly. None of the things that we're talking about today are going to add any horsepower whatsoever um, to your engine at all. You know if you think you're going to get 25 or 50 horsepower by taking all this garbage off, no. Supposedly it won't burn as clean but I would actually love to see a test of um, how much more emissions you get out of a 22R engine uh, by taking all this crap off of it. Right. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the EGR. We're going to be deleting this, the EGR delete. Uh, EGR is exhaust gas recirculation. Now what happens with that is some of the exhaust gases are brought back around and reintroduced into the combustion chamber to make sure that it's completely burned all the way through. And once again, it's not all the time, it's some of the time, and it's controlled by vacuum and valve switches. That's what a bunch of these stinking lines are from and for is your EGR system to open and close and turn it on, turn it off, and we're not going to use that anymore. It's gone too, right? You have a couple of other systems. Uh, you have your EVAP controls, which is part of your canister system here, and that's really just your gas byproducts from your gas tank. Uh, unburned hydrocarbons, unburned gasoline, the vapors from it, this will go back into your intake, and there's nothing wrong with leaving that down there. It's not going to make any difference, so I'm going to leave this portion of it on. Now, why would you do all this garbage, right? Well, for me, I don't want to have to go through all these vacuum lines that need to be replaced, and the EGR, see if it works, and go through all that garbage. Basically, to clean up the engine compartment. Get rid of all this stuff. This truck is going to have an antique plate on it, so I don't have to do emissions testing anyway. After deletion of all this, I'm going to take it to and see if it will actually pass or not, because most of these clowns at the emissions testing places where they have to put a probe into the tailpipe, I think half the time that thing doesn't even work. So I'm going to do that to find out how dirty it actually is. I think that would be interesting. Now as far as what we need to cover up or take off or put on as far as the EGR delete portion goes, let's take a look at that. Alright, so this is the old head. If you're looking at your air injection, actually it's going to go in here and it's going to go into your exhaust. Here, 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 and here. That's going to be your injection of your air going down in through there. Woo awesome. As far as your EGR, that's going to be internal, right? Your EGR is actually part of the chambers of the head. It goes through here, comes up here. This portion here, um, coolant actually goes through here and the EGR gases will go through here, go through that cover plate across, cool off because of this, uh, cool down because of the coolant here, go here and then come back out, come back out here into your EGR, right? 
and then as it goes through the EGR on and off, it'll come up through here and then go back into your intake. Now one of the disadvantages of the EGR is that it dumps a bunch of carbon because it's exhaust gases uh, and it wants to reburn it, so it's dumping a bunch of, car of carbon back into your intake. So this will clean that portion up. You won't have to clean out the intake. When I had the uh, when I had the intake apart, it took forever to get all the black gunky carbon that came from the EGR valve uh, and the exhaust gases cleaned up on the inside of that, so that won't be there anymore. Obviously, if we take all these piece parts off of it, you're going to have to cover those places up. So there is a cover plate uh, assembly. Let's take a look at that. This is just one cover plate set that I purchased, um, and there's a bigger cover plate here. And I can't mention the name of this company, but I engraved what I thought of them uh, on the cover plate here. <laughs> this cover plate will actually block off these passages here and seal up the uh, coolant passes here so there's no leakage. Where the EGR mounts on your head, this is going to go here and block off the EGR exhaust gases coming out right there. Where your air injection goes into your exhaust manifold, there's plates here that would cover that up. Awesome, so we're going to cover that up and that up. And on the back side of the intake, um, where the EGR would mount, there's a cover plate for here. So that'll pretty much do it um, for the EGR delete. Most of the small lines can be capped off. The fuel pressure regulator needs a vacuum line. I know the brake booster, uh, power steering. I don't know if I'm going to have to use a VSV valve, but I'll get into all that later. But that's basically your EGR delete. Those are your main pieces of it that you need to be able to block everything off, get rid of that garbage, and then when I do the test at the emission station, it's going to be interesting to see how far off it is or if it actually will pass with all this garbage off of it. Like I said, it's not running all the time. It only engages once in a while with the reed valve and the EGR and all that stuff going with the resonator. All that stuff is going to be gone. It's going to be a cleaner installation. I won't have to worry about it. But if I croak and somebody buys this truck and they move to California, God help them. Uh, they may be in trouble because it doesn't have all the equipment still intact. <laughs> Any questions, comments, suggestions, post them below. Um, it's really not that hard to get all this garbage off of it. It will be interesting to see how it runs with all that stuff eliminated. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Keep turning wrenches.